Hello and welcome! My name is Alyssa and this is Into the Heart Wild. And today I'm going to be talking to you guys about my 2023 reading goals, as well as maybe a little bit about like my page goals, my, my channel goals. That's, that's the word I was looking for, channel. So I'm going to talk about like what I'm going to be doing reading wise, and I'm also going to like tell you guys some series that I would like to tackle next year. And I'm hoping that with the direction that I'm going to be going, that I will actually be able to follow through with tackling some of these series. My biggest change to my reading for next year is I am going to be taking part in zero challenges, zero reading challenges. I am not doing any of them. Uh, the Probably the only one that I will be taking part in will be the Goodreads, you know, goal or whatever, like read this many books, but I always put that to like something low. Uh, my daughter quickly made me not do big goals because I let her do it one year and she put the goal to like, like 150 books, maybe 200, I forget what it was. She did something stupid and outrageous and I was determined to show her that I could do it. And I did. <laughs> And ever since then, I have not allowed her to set up my goal. <laughs> uh, I have also uh, lowered my goal every single year. I want to say this year I set it to 25 books. So honestly, I might just set it to 12 next year. One book a month. Because why not? Because other than that, I do not want to take part in any challenges. I did so many different, I attempted so many different challenges this year. There was one that I did every single month. It's from Litzy. It was called Book Bingo. And basically you would pick 20 books, put them on a bingo board. You get five free spots for five free reads. And there are two books, a book spin and then a double spin, where if you read those books, you could be entered into a drawing to win a prize. And it happened every single month. And so your entire like monthly TBR was like based around that. And I would have to try and do that while incorporating like other challenges. Like I know I did like medieval a thon. There was a, a Greek mythology like reading challenge at some point that I also had like a self challenge of reading like 20 books over 500 pages. That did not happen. I think I only read like five. <laughs> Uh, I also had like taken part in like a manga challenge, which I am severely behind, uh, <laughs> which I might try and see if I can get some of that caught up this month. But, you know, and then I did like the no the November neck galley challenge, just so many different challenges that I was trying to do because I was like, oh, these will be fun. And I have pretty much learned that they're not fun. They're, they're not, unless you are capable of actually following, following through with your plans and you have the time to dedicate to following those plans, they're hindering. Uh, challenges can, challenges I have learned hinder my ability to read because it's bad enough making a TBR and being like, oh, when I made that TBR two weeks ago, all those books sounded interesting. And now two weeks later, they don't look interesting at all. <laughs> That's how some of these challenges felt like, oh, I picked these ones out for the challenge and now none of them sound interesting anymore. How fun. So I, I just, I want to have the freedom to pick up whatever book I look at on my shelves and go, yep, I want to read that right this minute. So I'm not doing any challenges next year, not taking part in any of them. Uh, one of the other things that I would like to tackle is more of my actually owned bookshelf. S bookshelves. <laughs> uh, I own over like 800 books. I want to say I'm at the 800 mark now. And I have maybe read 300 of them. Like I have a spreadsheet where I count like where I keep track of all the new all my books in my um, collection as well as new ones that come in and I want to say this year I added like a hundred books to the collection and out of those hundred that I added I want to say I read about 28 to 30 of them and I would like to change that I would like to be more on top of the ones that I read the ones that I buy while reading them also you know maybe like pulling back on what I 
what I purchase. Uh, so I would definitely like to be able to focus on what I own for my reading choices, which does make it hard when it comes to new books because <laughs> I have such a big backlog. The other things that is going to be changing is my approach to arcs, specifically through NetGalley. Uh, I have decided that until I can get all of my current backlog, which is sitting at 14 books up to zero, I will then only request one book at a time so that I don't create a backlog and I can keep up on it. And I would only like to request the books that I really, really would like to have because with NetGalley and having to keep your score up to a certain percentage, it it messes with my brain, you know, because I'm like, I'm failing. I, I have a low score under 80%, I'm failing. <laughs> and I don't like that feeling. So I would like to just try try and stay on top of it. And on top of that, I always feel bad that uh, some of the review, like this month, like this year, everything that I have is, is, is late, technically. I didn't read them and get them reviewed before the books came out. You know, which I know it's one of those things where it's like a review is never late, but because I got it early, for, my brain says they're late. You didn't get them out in time. You made them late. Good job, Alyssa. <laughs> So that's, that's how I would like to approach my um, neck alley arcs. I have, <laughs> I've been trying to get, cause on, I have a blog where I do reviews as well, which, you know, uh, sometimes falls behind. I just realized, I just realized Hakai was missing. <laughs> I just realized he was on the floor. Um, so so with my website, I have been trying to get arcs under control on there because I, I have put up notices on my blog saying no more digital arcs uh, because one, when I get arcs, I do take pictures of them for my Instagram and uh, physical copies work better. They really do. And I understand sending a physical copy isn't always viable for indie authors but it's at the point to where I was only being offered digital copies and my Kindle, between what I buy from Kindle and what I get as digital arcs from both NetGalley authors and Book Sirens and then my manga, because I read manga and download manga to my Kindle, I, I don't have room. I don't have, I'm constantly, my Kindle is constantly like, you have one gigabyte of space. And I haven't bought like an, an extended uh, SD card because I can get one for it because I have the fire, but I haven't yet because of cost. I have been trying to get that under control too with like being more selective as to which arcs I do accept from people who do email me. Um, I gotta say it's a little frustrating when I put on there not currently accepting digital arcs and that's still all people want to send me because I'm like it clearly states on there that I cannot accept digital arcs right now and it's just it's just due to the fact that I do not have space for them like I cannot accept them uh <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of frustrated with some indie authors because I'm like guys read my guidelines please so I just, I just in general want to get my arcs under control to where I'm not always feeling like I have like a giant backlog of them. So with that said, in terms of my goals for the channel here is I would like to become more consistent of figuring out how many videos I want to put up a month, how many videos a week, what days I want to have my videos released because I know as it stands right now, I am extremely inconsistent. And I know that that can be an issue for some people because a lot of people like routine and they like following things, but I am um, chaos. My brain is chaos. Like, <laughs> like that is the best way to explain it. Like I, I am chaotic in so many things that I do and how I run my life that I don't really like create routines for things. I just kind of like, I'm going to do this 
right now 47 times and then not touch it again for three weeks like that's just that's just how my brain works but I would like to become consistent because I know in regards to growing a channel and growing uh, a community consistency works best so if you guys have any um suggestions for like good days for posting video videos <laughs> videos uh let me know because like they'll probably end up always going up in the morning that way you know people all day long have a chance to watch it or whatever but um any and if you guys have any you know like hey like maybe maybe every tuesday and wednesday like just if you want <laughs> so but that is something i would like to do i'd like to be a bit more consistent with my video uploads i would also like to start tackling actual reviews because i know right now i have yet to really post a singular review for a book on here i'm not gonna lie a little intimidated by it while i can write an amazing review speaking one can be a little a little difficult but it is something that I would like to tackle that way there can start being that content on here since this is like a book reviewing channel you know so those are the big goals for next year in regards to the channel and just my overall reading so now I'm going to show you guys what series that I would like to prioritize next year. So let's go ahead and let's see what series I would like to tackle in 2023. So the first one, cause I'm not gonna pull out my entire collection. <laughs> this year I had made plans to try and read all 26 books in the Dragon Riders of Pern series. I made it through one, two, three, four, five of them. And then I kind of fell off on it. I only got around to writing like a review for like one of them, which was partly why I ended up falling off on it because I would like to read them and review them each. So one of my goals is to pick that back up, go back into my Dragon Riders of Pern read through because I personally love the Pern world. Uh, Harper Hall trilogy is my favorite and it's what introduced me to the world. But as for reading all 26 books, I have never done. So, and I own 25 of 26, <laughs> thanks to my lovely best friend who has been finding them at the used bookstores for me. So I will be picking that one back up. I will also, because I'm not pulling these ones down either, but I will also be going back to my Merlin read through. I stopped because I don't own book four and I still don't own book four. So I'm going to have to crack that at some point, but I would like to go back to reading T.A. Barron's Merlin series, the, the Lost Years, because I was enjoying them. It's a middle grade series and it's like middle grade, like young, young teenager. Like I wouldn't, I want to say it's more like around there, uh, but I am absolutely enjoying it. And the only reason I stopped is because I don't have book four and I never decided to buy it. So <laughs> I would like to correct that next year. <laughs> So one of the series that I would definitely like to tackle is the Founders Trilogy by Robert Jackson Bennett. So we have Boundary Side, Shorefall, and Locklands. I have read none of these. I own the whole trilogy and I have read none. <laughs> And what pulled me into these was I heard that there are talking inanimate objects. I love that trope. And then Trin over at Portable Magic just recently said that there is a grumpy old man in these books. And I was like, I need to read about that grumpy old man. <laughs> so it's definitely moved up. I would definitely love to do that. I like how this, how these spines look. They're so, they're so bold. So found the founders trilogy the next one we have is the sun eater series by christopher rocchio uh as you can see i have three of them here i have book four in a package somewhere that i haven't opened yet and i have not ordered book five yet uh i also have the short story collections that they did special editions of with andridia I think that's how they say it. 
I may be saying that wrong, uh, books. But uh, we have Empire of Silence. I love this cover so much, you guys. Like, <laughs> like I'm not going to lie to you guys. Like, I'm in love with the guy on the cover. Like, I just, I look at that picture and I'm like, I'm in love with you. Like, <laughs> so we have Empire of Silence, which I've read the first 50 pages of this because I originally had it from the library. And I read the first 50 pages and I was like, I have to own this. And then I bought it and I did not finish reading it because that's how my brain works. And book two, Howling Dark. These guys are so chonky and heavy. And then book three, Demon in White. Uh, like I said, I have book four. It's just in a package somewhere because I haven't unpackaged it yet. But definitely this series, I've heard nothing but good things about it. Um, they are big old chonky dudes. So <laughs> hopefully I end up falling more in love with it as I read through it next a very high priority one which i had wanted to get to this year but because of all the reading challenges i did uh it never happened but that would be finishing off the ray Ry raya revelations by michael j sullivan so i have read theft of swords i loved this um i am ridiculously in love with hadrian <laughs> he's on my list of men I would marry okay uh, <laughs> I, I I loved the the ease that this was to read it was just oh it was so it was so easy to just like fall in love with it and it's just it's your classic fantasy but so easy to to just follow along with so I still need to get to Rise of Empire and Heir of Novrin so I do want to tackle these ones I I want to finish this series because I, plus I miss Hadrian. Just, I'm just going to say it like that. Like I, I miss Hadrian, you guys. <laughs> I want to know what he's doing. <laughs> and the last very, very, very kind of like high priority for me is, hold on, they're, they're big chunky books, guys. The Faithful and the Fallen. Yes, I'm missing Wrath. I have been asking for it for the past three years at Christmas for someone to buy me Wrath. Okay, three three Christmases I have been asking and nobody has bought it for me. Uh, my older sister did buy me these three though because uh, she only thought there was three in the series. <laughs> and I was like, no, there's four. And she was like, oh, I didn't know. But anyways... This is super high on my list because after I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go like that before I drop them. Reading the first two books in the Bloodsworn Saga, which is my introduction to Gwen's work, which I absolutely love those ones. I was like, it's 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 time. It is time that I read The Faithful and the Fallen. Like, I can't put it off anymore. I just can't. Like who I am so terrible for like putting it off. And now that I have been introduced to Gwen's writing, like, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> so, yes, definitely these ones. Hopefully by the time I start these, I will have Wrath. Because I have heard people say that when you finish Ruin, you want to immediately start Wrath because of how it ends. And I'm like, I need to make sure that I have that. I do. Because I'm not trying to, like, sit around not having that if that's what everyone recommends. <laughs> Those are the top like priority ones. It's it doesn't look like a lot, but you guys saw how chonky these books are. Like a lot, like all of these, minus maybe the Founders trilogy. Like they're they're like in the five hundred plus range, you know. Especially especially Rocky's books. Like them suckers are huge, and then also the fact that the Pern has twenty six books in it. So. Yeah, those are my big priority series. I will also be reading other things. Like I have like a whole shelf of more Greek mythology retellings that I have picked up that I have not read. So I do want to dive into a bunch of those. I also have a couple of historical fiction ones that I have gotten this year that I would like to dive into next year. So there's, there's, there's some things that I'm looking forward to. And so I'm really hoping that not focusing on challenges will allow me to get to all of those fun things. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any thoughts on any of these books or any thoughts on my goals for next year, uh, go ahead and drop a comment below. 
and like this video if you want to see more go ahead and subscribe and i will see you guys next time bye